world-class monitoring system that they were supposed to have in Alberta, both the federal and the provincial government made that announcement, and yet they're saying that this Northern Gateway is gonna have a world-class uh, Environmental Protection Act that's gonna be on there. Well, the scientists just walked away from this world-class monitoring system from what's the federal government and the provincial government announced uh, two years ago, I think it was, in regards to uh, that region. Well, the reason why the scientists walked away was because of the fact that all their collective data that they're uh, collecting is just gonna sit on the, on the shelf and collect dust because the federal government and provincial government ain't gonna be doing anything with, the, with it. You know, so therefore, we as the First Nations people that are gonna be affected by it have to stand up and say enough is enough and let's start showing what sustainable development's all about. Can I have a follow-up follow question, please? Um, and that is, you, you're kind of a diverse group from, you know, stretching from Alberta to BC and then <clears throat> down into the US. I mean, what are you actually planning to do? Are you gonna stand in front of the bulldozers? Are you taking governments to court? What are you concretely doing? At, at this point in time, um, like everybody else, like, you know, what the RCMP have been asking, what the federal government's been asking, what the provincial ministers have been asking, what are First Nations gonna be doing? Well then, uh, like I've said earlier along, uh, in back in January, it's gonna be a long, hot summer. David Lundgren of Reuters. Uh, another question on the same theme to, to Chief Lane, if I might. You said, um, we're going to stop these pipelines one way or another, we will not allow these pipelines to cross our territory. Can you give me more details from where you sit in the States and how that would work? What, what, what can you do? Well, uh, across the high plains, you have the, uh, uh, Great Plains Tribal Chairman's Association unanimously uh, stood against Keystone XL. You have the Black Hills Treaty Council unanimously stood against the, the Keystone XL. You have the International Treaty to protect the tar sands from, uh, you know, protect the page secret from tar sands project stood against this. So there's a real, real question mark in our minds whether or not this is gonna be signed or not signed. So along with every single legal thing that can be done, there's direct action going on now to plan uh, how to physically stop the pipeline because this is illegal. This is illegal uh, what's happening. Not only has there never been land surrendered or ceded in British Columbia, if you were to go the majority of indigenous people on reservations and reserves across the United States and Canada, there's not one reserve, I believe. There's some maybe, but most, the large majority, would say our treaties have been broken. They have been broken. They need to be renegotiated from where they stand to correct what's happened. And when you have broken treaties, and you have the inherent indigenous rights of the indigenous legal order, and you have a Canadian legal order, and you have a US legal order, the international legal order, I believe, stands with the indigenous legal order, and I believe growing numbers of Canadians and relatives in the United States are also standing up to stop this insanity. And it has to be stopped. And the economic system, by the way, I think, globally, will not, uh, continue as it is unsustainably and in time there won't be an issue because there won't be a need for this kind of insanity and greed for more fossil fuels that's going to end simply economically you can't continue to print money every country in the world and print it and print it and print it and print it and not sooner or later pay, pay the piper so this model of development is unsustainable you cannot continue it issue talks about a delegation to Ottawa. Have you managed to speak to anyone in government about your position? Has anyone talked to you from the federal government side? Can you repeat your question? Yeah, your news release talks about a delegation to Ottawa. Have you talked to anyone in Ottawa in the government? Has the federal government talked to you at all? We've um, tried to meet with as much government officials as we can to try to um, get
get them on site to, um, or even hear what we have to say about our, about the destruction that's happening. I know in BC, we never signed one treaty. We um, negotiated for a little while. My, my band did for a little while, but we, nothing came out of it. We sat at a table with the provincial government for and federal government for five years. Out of the five years, we talk about certainty. We talk about accommodation. And we talk about consultation. Three different words. Spent a lot of money on it, doing nothing. And all the time, the government are trying to, all they were doing is planning on how to legally accommodate us without giving us anything. Consult with us. The proper way to consult with anybody is to stand there and talk properly, legally. That's why I mentioned that we need to be legally recognized in Canada. That's the first step for the economy. You can't go anywhere without us. No matter what you do, we're protected by the Constitution of Canada. We have protected rights. 170 cases has been won by First Nations in Canada. And yet, there's still never seen no change of how we can work together. And that's all we want to do, nothing less. Canadian government signed into the UN Declaration 2010, recognized my rights, all their rights, and they only did it, they only did it to um, showcase the world. They're not changing nothing. But the world's watching now they're going to make sure they watch us. Cadena Alliance are were pretty big in BC. Carrier people, they call us. And we believe in our ways, and we still carry our ways. <clears throat> and we're never going to change that for the kids. And we look at, I look at the government, their ancestors, built this uh, environmental laws. Took them years to do it, millions of dollars to do that. Harper came in and threw it all out the door. For what? Money. Everybody wants money. We don't, we don't need money. We live without it. The only reason why the Canadian government are giving us money is because they owe us. They owe us more than they, what they have, what they're giving us. They're reaping the land, the resources that come from my land. Every year, over $600 million in stumpage are being taken from my land. Not one penny comes to us to, for my, my kids and whoever on our reservation, nothing. Industry take it off, and it's got to stop. And we're going to stop it. We're going to make the change. When they talk about government to government, that's what we want. We just don't want to hear it in public public's eyes saying they're speaking to us government to government. They don't even understand how we live. They don't understand our laws, and that's what they have to do. They want to change Canadian government or provincials. They want change. They have to come through us and make that change. They can't go in the back door somewhere and make laws that would affect us and think they'll get away with it. It's years and years ago when a pipeline went through, we had no rights to go to court or anything. Now we have all that rights behind us. And that's what we're gonna do. We do have to go to court whether we have to stand in front of any of the machines that's going to take the oil through, we're going to do that. And that's, we're, 
We're up against a wall here. We have nowhere else to go. Canadian government's not going to help us. Provincial government's not going to help us. Only my brothers. That's who's going to help us. And the world is watching, Canada. The world is watching. We're here to make that change, and we're going to make that change. More Radio Canada. Yeah, uh, I'm wondering if you're completely against Keystone, or you're against Keystone in your territory, and if it's the latter, how many territories, or, or, or anyway, how many reserve or territories or nation Keystone would cross? I think we have two different animals here, oil and gas. They're both destructive. Some of them has been put in before. We, that's why I talk about the rights, what we had before, that we didn't have before. That's when all these pipelines came in. But they are destructive. And we, can't, we can do something about it now. We have to ma help make those changes. That, that, that's what I mean. We they have to come to us to make those changes. Could you, could you respond to my question, though? Are you, because you're saying we're against the pipeline crossing our territory. If it cross, if it goes around, would you be fine with that? And how many territories? There's, there's no around. There's no around anything. You can't go around anything. If I'm not there, yeah. you can cut any people there. And if I'm not there, we have Crees. And if I'm not there, we have Sushwaps, we have Chilcotans. We have all these different nations that the pipeline has to go through. And we, they explain that we already signed a declaration to stand together to protect the water, the river. That's what we've done. We're put here, we're put here by our creator to do that for everybody, for you guys. We, we don't have that, uh, I don't know, uh, there's something in us that just makes us environmentalists, we're born with it because we have to protect and we have to save for the future. And I, I don't know where or how people can understand that. It's easy, it's easy to go out and go to a store, wake up in the morning, go out and go to a store and do what you have to do. When you're at home, you go into the land. And that land is sacred to us. Everything is sacred to us. We pray. When we pray, we pray out on the land. Yes, I would like to make comments in regard to your question. My name is Faith Spotted Eagle. I'm a Hangtua, Dakota, Nakota from the uh, Seven Council Fires in South Dakota, Dakota Territory. Um, the Keystone XL pipeline is going through our treaty territory. And so even though we're many miles south of you, it's a pattern of um, oppressive action that has happened to us over the last 200 years. So the KXL is not a recent event. It, uh, the hydroelectric power that was stolen from our people. And the important thing to remember in the United States, um, it has been recognized in the US Constitution, the sixth article of the Constitution says that treaties are the supreme law of the land. And part of that is there's a doctrine called the Winters Doctrine, which established us as senior users of the water. That's already been established by treaty. And anytime you have a federal law standing with the treaty, that's a powerful statement. And so we plan to stand with those two statements and it is a passing over the Oglala Aquifer. It is not too far from the Missouri River where I grew up. And again, when you look at the nations that we live in, we live in what is called a post-conflict society. There was a war here. The war has not ended. The parties went to separate corners, but for us, in living in a post-conflict society, there has never been any healing that happened between the parties that oppressed us. And so that's what we're dealing with. It's a continuing.